Okay guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can easily set up a simple database table inside Excel. This is quite straightforward, so let's get into it. Okay guys, so the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to be taking a look at Excel. So here I have a very simple kind of set of data just dumped down rawly into Excel through columns A through to E, right? So we've got an ID column, a name column, a department column, a date column, and then a sales column, okay? Now now in here, we've got no breaks within our data, okay? We're just a complete data dump of all of the information that we want to put into a very simple Excel table, okay? Now, if you do have a break, let's say, for example, there's a gap right here in the middle, uh, then when you go to create a table, what couple of different things could happen? One, it might only select that top half, okay, and miss all of this bottom data. Alternatively, it may actually select everything and then you have a blank row contained inside your table, okay? Both of those are less than ideal. So you wanna to wanna to make sure that you have no gaps inside your data table. So we're just gonna go ahead and grab this and we're gonna move it back up here. Okay, so there's no gaps inside our data table or inside our data, okay? Now the easiest and quickest way to actually create a, or convert this to a table is to select anywhere within your data, as long as there's no gaps, and go over to the home ribbon, okay? Come across here to where it says format as table, choose a drop down menu, and then you get all of these different formats. Now, a lot of people just think, oh, that's just, a format for the actual spreadsheet and it's it is and it isn't it actually converts your data into a structured table that lets you do things with that data later down the line and we'll get to that in a moment but you can also at the same time actually change what it looks like okay so this is why i always find this the easiest and smoothest way to create a table inside excel now i personally prefer the black and white but you might have different preferences such as blue purple green orange whatever it may be right i'm going to go ahead and just click on this one here and it's automatically going to understand all of the data that is contained from in and around my cell that I had selected. Okay, so let me come back here. I select this date here, but if I click on marketing, you can see that there's cells all around this cell that I selected, right, C9. That means that what Excel can do is it can find out where the edge of our data actually is, top, bottom, left, and right. Okay, so we don't have to highlight the data. All we have to do is select or be con in selected a cell within our actual data, if that makes sense. We can, of course, highlight the entire thing if we wanted to, come over to the home part of the ribbon, go over to format as table, select this again. It's also automatically gonna highlight everything in there as well. Okay, but personally, just select somewhere I find that really easy quick and easy to do just one cell within the data go to the home ribbon go over to format as table click on the format that you like and then what it's going to do is it's going to detect your entire set of data and it's also going to have this little tick box underneath it okay that says my table contains headers now if your table does indeed contain headers you can go ahead and tick that mine does if it does not then you can obviously remove that i'm going to leave that ticked and i'm going to click ok and it's going to format our table here you know with the kind of black headers and the banded rows that we like in the formatting that i wanted which was obviously black and white now of course when you do this it's going to open up a contextual tab at the top here called table design okay the context textual tab only appears when you are inside the actual table. Okay, so if I click off, we can see the contextual tab disappears. Okay, click in and the table tab comes back, comes back uh, in view. Okay, so in here, the first thing we want to do is go to table name and we're going to name this. I'm just going to say sales data and you have to, you can't have spaces. So we have to use underscore and I'm going to go data. Okay. And then I can just press enter. And now our table has a name. That means that we can use that table in our formulas by referencing its name. Okay. So if you don't like the, the formatting that you decided to use, you can change that using the styles as well. I'm going to leave it as black and white because that's how I like it. Okay, so that's really quite a simple data table in Excel. You don't really need to do much more than just this. Now, one of the perks is that you get to use this data differently. Okay, you could hook up that data table into Power BI. You could you hook it up to Power Automate. There's lots of things that you can do externally to Excel now that the data is formatted as a table. There's also some pretty cool things you can do with this data inside Excel. So we have 
nine formulas here, okay, or nine different names of formulas. We've got sum, okay, sum if, sum ifs, count, count if, count ifs, average, average if, and average ifs. Okay, now we're just going to summarize the sales, right? So the first thing we might want to do here is actually go equals sum, open up a bracket, right? And a lot of people will just go ahead and select the uh, column that they're looking for, right? And you can see here that it's automatically detected that that's data is actually contained inside a table and it's a part of the column that is called sales so you can see the sales underscore data which is the name of the um, actual table itself and then in the square brackets we have the name of the column okay and you can see that it is enabled sales now alternatively rather than selecting all your data you could type this in you could start by saying sales and you can see here that it has the little table uh, appear, right? It's sales underscore data. If we click that, okay, that'll open up this area here. If we go for a square bracket, it's then going to list out all of the different columns that are inside our uh, data table. That means that you could actually reference this in a totally different sheet, never actually have to navigate over to the table at all. You can just type in exactly what you want, which is in my case, sales. And you can see here it comes up. I'm gonna click that. And then we're just gonna put the last square bracket in. And now it's gonna summarize all of our sales data for the column of sales. And if I press return on that, it's gonna come back at 4.6 million. Fantastic, right? We can also go a little bit further and go sum if, open up another bracket here. Now the range, of course, is going to be, you know, the um, the sales data itself. We can click it or we could type it in. I've just clicked it for the speed of this. And the criteria can be, you know, something like, let's say we want it to be, you know, in quotations, greater than, let's say we only want sales that are greater than maybe 200,000. So I'll put that in, uh, close those quotations. Okay, and then of course, we can go ahead and do the sum range. Now, the sum range is actually a secondary optional criteria. You don't need to do this. Um, so I can, of course, just close that off, press return, and it's only going to summarize, you know, sales that are greater than 200,000. Now we can go a little bit further and use some ifs if you're familiar. Some ifs basically allows us to have multiple different criteria. So for example, we're going to select using the black arrow here, by the way, guys, you can see I hover above the sales tab. You get the little black arrow. If I click that, it's gonna highlight the entire data set of sales. And then we're gonna go criteria range. The criteria range this time, I might actually only summarize by the department, okay? Where the department name, and I can use quotations and just type this in as sales. Okay, which obviously is the only department that's going to have any sales anyway, but you're, you can kind of get the point here, right? You have your sum range and then you have a criteria and a criteria range, right? Or criteria range and then a criteria. Press and uh, close the bracket, press enter on that and it's going to come back with an error. So let me go ahead and find out why that is. Um, so let me go ahead and see why that criteria has an, oh, okay. So it's because we have C and we need the black arrow as department for sales, press return. And there we go. So quick little debug there. Basically I had selected column C rather than the actual table data itself. So we had the uh, range, right? The sum range contained within the data table. And then I had my criteria not inside the data table. They obviously do have to match up. So here you can see in this example that we're summarizing the sales, but we are filtering that sales data by the department of the sales team. Okay, or the sales department. Okay, and of course that then summarizes the data only to those areas. You could repeat those processes for counts, count if, count ifs, average, average if, and average ifs as well. I'm not gonna go through all of those in this video because they are you know, quite simple to do, very similar to the sum, sum if, and sum ifs formulas, but it gives you a bit of an idea as how to create a very simple you know, table in Excel and how to interact with it. Okay guys, and just like that, it's that simple to set up a simple table in Excel and start interacting with it using formulas. This is a great way to make your content and your data more accessible across a whole wide range of different applications. So why don't you give it a go and let me know how it goes in the comments. If you found it useful, informative, smash a like button, subscribe for more, and I'll catch you in the next one.